made this thing. Pretty cool, right? Got some Brembo bakes for my Miata. And so begins phase two of the all drive Miata build. Phase one is complete. The car is running and driving with an EJ205, the world's first Subaru powered all drive Miata. Everything works, it cools, it pulls, it, you know, everything works. Phase two is making the car look the parts and making the car last. This thing is rusty, it's unpainted, it's ugly. We need to fix all of that. And then of course, phase three, we'll be putting a bunch of new parts on it so the Subaru engine and the chassis performs incredibly. But right now, we gotta focus on phase two. As you can see, we have a bunch of parts here, all courtesy of Moss Yard. We have some aftermarket parts up there for phase three, and we have some restoration parts for phase two. Yes, that's right, Moss Miata not only offers a huge selection of aftermarket parts, but they also offer OEM parts and such for restoring a Miata. We've got quarter panels, we've got fenders, they also have side sills, and a bunch of other stuff to restore your Miata. I wanna give a huge thanks to Moss Miata for sponsoring this build and sponsoring the channel. We've got some really cool stuff coming up. This stuff is going to make the Rally Miata actually good, instead of just a rusty Miata with a cool engine in it. If you guys want any parts for your Miata, whether they're restoration parts or aftermarket performance stuff, go ahead and check out the description down below. Moss Miata has everything you could ever want for NAs and Bs and Cs and Ds and some Fiat's. In this video, what we're gonna do is mount the new quarter panels, mount the new fenders, and fix the front body line. The reason why we got quarter panels is to get rid of all that rocket rust. The, the most popular place for a Miata to rust is right here on, right in front of the rear tire, right here. So cutting the old stock one out and welding this in will fix that. This is just a big thing of galvanized steel. It's really, really nice. Unfortunately, once we mount these new stuff, uh, we're gonna have to cut them up because we've got big, big tires on here and they don't fit the, uh, the stock body lines. So we'll cut out the wheel wells. We'll cut out the front, the front fenders. That's gonna be painful cutting up brand new stuff, but we have to do it. And then we'll begin body work, make sure that it looks right. It doesn't look like we just welded new sheet metal onto it. I'm gonna make the hood scoop for the hood. I might finish the front bumper, and I might start on the rust. Um, phase two is gonna be a pretty long process, but it's it's arguably the most important. What's the build if it doesn't look cool and if it doesn't last, because rust is destroying it. It's just, just not worth it, so. Before we remove anything, I'm gonna go ahead and make a hood scoop. Now, originally, I was gonna, I was gonna use a Subaru hood scoop. The problem about that is that it didn't really fit that well, and it wasn't that big, so it wouldn't scoop that much air. The body lines on the Subaru hood and the body lines on the Miata hood are just so drastically different it would have required a lot of body work to get Subaru Hood Scoop looking decent for this. So we're gonna go ahead and make one out of sheet metal, kind of like we did way back when. Speaking of which, I still have this thing. This was the first thing I ever welded. And look, it looks really dumb. It's way too big. Makes it look kind of like a rhino. <laughs> I'm really happy with this hood scoop. It's not too much, it's just, it's perfect. I really like the way it looks, I like how big it is, and I like how well it was made. I wonder who made it, but like, ugh, it's just nice smooth edges, and it just fits the body line so perfectly. Man, that's a real come up from there to there. Now in order to attach this, I was trying to think of ways to attach the hood scoop to the hood without welding tabs on it and just putting a bolt through both, and I figured it out. I'm gonna weld studs to the bottom of the hood scoop, then drill holes in the hood and bolt it in, because I want it to look like this but I want it to be attached, right? So that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I think I think that just looks really mean. It looks it looks badass.
incredibly pleased with that. We've got a pretty cool looking hood scoop that is very solid on there. And you don't see the mounting system. It's so much so much of an improvement over this, this first thing I ever welded. I didn't even really weld this. I just tacked it together and then gave it to Mike to weld. But yeah, that's gonna be awesome. That will provide plenty of airflow through the radiator. I, I even added that duct thing that lines up perfectly with the radiator. Or why do I keep saying radiator? With the intercooler. And then we'll also have weather stripping all around. So the air going into the scoop has to go through the intercooler. And there's nothing behind the intercooler, so it'll be much more efficient. So we'll have plenty of cooling for our intake temps. I think it's about time we get started on these, shall we? As you can all see, my nice new fenders are ruined. <laughs> Yay! Clap, clap, clap. So a couple things I'll say. Number one, that kind of sucked to do. Number two, I did cut up brand new fenders. And number three, it kind of worked, kind of. So this main body line here, this divot in the fender is perfect. It fend, uh, you know, it's very parallel and it lines up nicely. The door body line is also very good. Obviously there is a chunk missing here, but keep in mind once we get the big tires on, yeah, we're, we're cutting all that off anyway. And then a fender flare is gonna go over that too. Now obviously this isn't flush and you know, I still have to grind everything down and it doesn't look good. It doesn't look like a body panel, but that will be fixed during body work. I guess I'll take this time to say that this is a race car. It's not a show car. I don't want it to look perfect with perfect paint and the perfectly smooth body and no. It's gonna be getting banged up. We're gonna be drifting it and doing all sorts of fun, crazy stuff of it. It just has to be a really awesome color, not rusty and better than it is now. And we're gonna do that. It won't be perfect, but it's gonna look, it's gonna look good. We're gonna be bringing this to a special shop with a special someone who is gonna help us with the body work and the paint. He's very good at what he does with body work. He'll be able to fix some of the things that I kind of screwed up in that process. But you know, overall, I, I'm, I'm happy with it. The fender now, it doesn't look like it's got a bent frame. That, that's the point, all right? We fixed that part. <laughs> Every time I lose motivation for just a second, I'm like, oh, this thing's gonna be so good when it's ripping. So, we gotta get to work. part of the stock quarter panel is cut off. I know it probably doesn't look that great, but this is actually awesome. All of the, the really, really rotted metal, like this stuff, like, look at this. <laughs> this is half Bondo, half metal right here. All of that junk is cut off. All of this 
is actually solid metal. There's some surface rust starting on it, but it's all solid and it's all structural. It's, it's good. We're gonna go ahead and wire brush all this rust off and then POR the inside of this quarter panel. And then we will cut this to size, grind down the paint, spray weld through primer on everything, and then weld the new quarter panel on. no corrosion it's just solid the, the entire thing super solid I'm really happy with the way it turns out I'm pretty exhausted and we have an entire another side to do this time I should know a little bit better what I'm doing though so I think I'll be able to get it done this is definitely going to require a decent amount of body work it's relatively smooth for what it is so it shouldn't be too bad in order to make this flush we we need a 22 gauge worth of Fondo so a super thin amount that won't be a problem but that's really awesome the entire life of this car, it's been rusty. Well, not the entire life. The entire life I've owned it, it's been rusty. It's just, it's so cool. Just being able to do that, there's, there's nothing there. It's just solid, galvanized steel. Hell yeah. <laughs> boop, boop. Boop, boop. If you're wondering why I am spray painting the backside of the, fin the quarter panel, I had to grind down the galvanized steel because if I welded it, then I would pass out and die. I don't want the bare steel to rust, so we're primary. Yeah. I'm also talking really loudly because I'm playing really loud music through these things. These $20 headphones slash ear protection, best, best uh, purchase I've ever, I've ever purchased. I know I'm talking loud, but I can't hear myself. Oops. We won't be seeing you again. <laughs> ah. Oh, it's too tall. Gosh. Now you scoot back a little bit, right? That's good enough. Well, ladies and well, ladies and gents, the day is done, and now the brown yacht has new court pounds has new fenders that have correct body lines. The exterior is 100% rust free. Something I never expected to say while owning this car. I'm really, really happy that we've been able to do this. I'm really happy with the way it went. It was miserable. It was a lot of hard work. I've been working today for a good 13 hours. Oof. One of the worst things is that I've had a wire from a, the wire brush stuck in my shirt somewhere. It's been itching me like all day, but I can't find it, so I can't take it out. I learned a lot. Huge thank you again to Moss Miata for providing the quarter panels and the fenders. If you want Miata parts, check them out down below. Huge thank you to HCP Welders for making a welder that can weld quarter inch steel, but it can also weld 22 gauge steel. It went really, really well. Didn't really have any troubles blowing through the metal or anything. In the next video, we'll be tackling all the rust that is not on the surface. So all the stuff underneath the chassis, undercoating all that, the wheel wells. We'll also be finishing this and pulling out the motor getting this car ready for paint. And of course, if you want to see that video, you can see it right now. If you head over to Patreon and become a Patreon.
Huge thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting. I am being legit when I say that this build would not be happening without Patrons, so I really appreciate it. Also, huge thank you to your support on YouTube. Just a huge thank you in general. Even though I feel miserable right now, I'm exhausted, I've been working all day, I'm so freaking grateful that I'm able to end the day feeling exhausted because I've been working my butt off on my own stuff rather than ending the day feeling exhausted because I've been working at Colors all day. Because I remember those days, and that sucks. See you guys in the next one. Peace out, and goodbye.